Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Class 47 Peter and today's video is going to be something with a difference because we are doing a video on a model today but it's not going to be a review because it's not made by a manufacturer that makes ready to run locomotives this is, an, this is in fact a kit built loco not just because it says it on the label there but in the title as well and because it's a kit built locomotive that somebody else has already made and then sold it on later it's not really worth doing a review on it but I am going to do this video on it where I'm just going to show it to you and talk about it and then at the end of that I will put some clips in of it running around on the layout but either way I bought this model during the Seven Valley Railways Autumn Steam Gala down at Kidderminster on the 42968 sales trade stand which anything you buy off that trade stand goes to the overhaul of 42968 which is the Stania Mogul that's preserved and I bought this locomotive because it looked very interesting and my attention was drawn to it However, I was unsure about getting in at first because this is not the first time I've owned a kit built loco. I did, I have bought one in the past, but it didn't work, and that was bought off eBay. And so I sent it back to the owner, and after that, I didn't really plan after that on buying a kit built loco. But there was something about this model that made me go for it. That's probably due to the fact that it looks interesting. I've not seen anything like it before. And so I bought it. I was slightly worried about whether it was going to work or not, but I am pleased to report that this model does indeed work. Because when I came back home, the first thing I did, I went into the garage, put it on the track, and I ran it. And it runs smoothly. And you'll soon see how smooth it runs in this video. And this model cost £30. I know it says £29.99, but that's basically 30 quid. And that's the cheapest price I've seen for a kit built model because they usually are quite expensive to buy. So that was an absolute bargain there. So, you know, that was, I suppose, another reason for me to get it. And this is a GWR locomotive and it's an 062. And it's not the only kit built they had on sale either. They also had a King Arthur, which is the Class N15. But that required, or it would have required, hand rails to put on the model, capside numerals and lining on the boiler and the cab. And so I didn't really fancy doing that because it would cost a bomb just to simply get all that stuff to simply get it to look decent to fit in my collection and to get it up and running. And I already own a Class N15 as well, made by Hornby, which as we all know, make models that are already ready to run, so it's no point in me getting that one. And I may buy another kit built loco in the future, but only if it's something that I'm interested in getting. If it's something I already have in my collection, then I'm not going to buy it. Because at the end of the day, there's no point when you've got a manufacturer that makes that Pacific model ready to run. But there is the locomotive, and just look at that. That certainly does look interesting, as I'm sure we'll all agree. And she's a little beaut as well. So I just put the box to one side, and obviously because it's a kit built loco, it didn't come in a box with the manufacturer's name on it. However, I think this model kit was made by Wills Finecast because they have made a kit that's similar to this locomotive which this locomotive is a ex Tafo locomotive because I did a bit of research on this loco although I didn't find anything in well although I didn't find any pictures of the real locomotive I did find some pictures of the kit at least which was close enough However, in the case of the Wills Finecast model, it would just be a body kit without the chassis. So it could be that same kit, but where the chassis would have come from, that's another story because I don't know. Unless it's been made by some other company that makes the same loco but supplies a chassis, I don't know. 
I'm sure someone will correct me if they know because I'm not really an expert on kit built locos at the end of the day because I usually don't buy them but I made the exception with this loco and it really does look the part because it's a locomotive I've never seen before not just in reality but in model form because there's nothing else like this on the market but then again I'm, I don't think there is anything you can anywhere for to buy this locomotive from now now so there's slight stutter in there I don't think there's anywhere where you can buy this model from now anymore because I'm pretty certain that the person who made the kit i.e. the manufacturer don't make this form of kit anymore it would be nice though if one of the ready to run manufacturers do decide to make this model in the future which which they could do was even so and because it's a kit built loco this is a metal kit so the body is made of metal and that certainly does make it a bit heavy but even a kit built locomotive needs weight for it to pull things because if you couldn't pull any of your stock then it wouldn't be of much use to you at the end of the day I will point out with this model though when I first bought it it did have to have some touching up to do first of all the transfers were peeling off only slightly though but in the case with this particular side most notably when I first bought it the transfers weren't put on correctly and they were all over the place so I removed them bought some new transfers and put them on and then put gloss coat varnish over them to protect them from getting torn which although you turn it into the light it gives it a shine effect but it does look nice at the end of the day and also I had to touch up some areas of paint because in some places some of the paint had come off and you could see the metal finish on it basically which is touched up now and she does look really nice even if it's a kit built model that someone's built it does look the part and I do like the driver in the cab there which adds to the detail being a kit built loco you can see the mechanism in the cab but you can't do much about that because that was going back to the time before anyone would think to put cab details like that on models and also you're not going to have sprung buffers either because kit book manufacturers don't supply them but given it's a, a metal body kit and the buffers are at the end of the day made of metal which is nice because I don't have care for the sprung buffers which is nice that they're made of metal though at least and the more important thing is the mechanism it might be an old mechanism but it runs smoothly and also whoever built it has added a real coal load in there which looks nice and a lamp on the back and interestingly this model does not have any tension lock couplings it does have these chain link couplings on the front and the back there as you can see however it does have these which is wire wrapped round the buffers and I have seen this on other models at model railway exhibitions now when I've been to them and seen models with those it does seem to work okay as a coupling but I've not yet tried it myself because I haven't got this model to pull anything because when I ran it on the tracks I didn't couple it up to any stock but I'm assuming it's going to work well if it's worked well on other models then it should work on this one no reason why it shouldn't one thing I might do at a later date though is to put a lamp on the front and I might paint the smoke box door darts and the smoke box door bands there as well and of course obviously being a kit the smoke box door darts or handles whatever you choose to call them are not going to be put on separately they are going to be part of the moulding but you know even though the majority of this detailing is part of the moulding it still looks nice I mean just look at the safety valve you know the whistle 
even though it's been moulded, it's on the side of the safety valve, on both sides, which still looks nice. And considering it's basic, it actually looks pretty good. You know, it's not incredibly basic that it's low in detail, because it definitely isn't. Because you have got the separately put on metal handrails, the brake pipes and the chain link couplings, and the driver and the cabin, other details. And so she does look nice. And at the price of 30 quid, then you can't really complain at the end of the day. But anyway, I'm now going to show you just how well she runs. Because I think I've done enough talking on this loco. Okay, I've just put her onto the track. That's how smooth she runs. Yes, I know the motor is noisy because it is old mechanism, but it's still a smooth runner considering the mechanism is old for its age. I mean, just look at that. And considering that's old mechanism, that's the slowest it can go. Well, Stopped on dirty track then. But well, it turns out the class 40 that I've got in the sidings over there, this motor was also running when I was running this on the track. But anyway. But yeah, considering it's an old model with old mechanism that is quite impressive for slow speed okay so I'm gonna put these calorestry coaches behind it and then I'm gonna show some shots of it running around on the track Now I should point out with that coupling you do have to lift the hook up to put it over that bit of wire that acts as a bar. But it is working well. And that looks really nice. And I will do some double headers with this because I am playing on it. It might look good double heading this with the Duke Dog, the Castle Class, and maybe even City of Truro. Perhaps, I don't know. So let's get her going. <laughs> 